man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. The Lord told me how He wants me to be, to abide in Him and His Word in me. Anything I ask Him... Hello everybody, I'm David Weeder, and welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. Glory to God. How to live in your covenant rights and privileges. This Bible, the Word of God, has an old covenant and a new covenant. And the new covenant was sworn in the blood of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Every word sworn by God to Jesus in Jesus' own blood. Our very salvation provisions. Salvation is not just the recreation of the human spirit. That word means deliverance. I'm talking about the word salvation. Deliverance, protection, healing, prosperity, all things that pertain unto life and godliness have been provided in your salvation package. And it is a blood sworn oath in the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. God swore to watch over you, protect you, provide healing for anything. All you have to do is receive it by faith and walk in the fullness of it on purpose according to the laws of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's what we mean by covenant living. There's terms to every covenant. Any covenant you enter into, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's a marriage covenant, if it's a, a, a legal a legal covenant uh, in regard to purchasing something or selling something, there's terms to every covenant. And you have to know those terms to operate in the fullness uh, of that covenant. Well, that's what the Covenant Living Broadcasts are about. Learning how to live in the fullness of your new covenant, which excludes the curse and includes the blessing of God. And it is that blessing that maketh rich, and He adds no sorrow with it. Glory to God. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank You so very much for everything that You have provided for us from the recreation of our spirit to the physical needs of our bodies met and supplied according to your riches and glory to our financial needs met social needs the needs of our emotions and our mind The renewing of our mind to your word transforms our life so that we are not conformed to this world system. And we're so very grateful and thankful for it. And now, sir, I'm asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips, bring revelation to the people of your word, by your spirit, 
into their spirits, manifested through their minds, to produce deliverance in every area of their lives, growth and maturity, and revelation knowledge on how to apply your word, which is your power unto their salvation. I ask you that I would speak accurately and precisely the principles and oracles of God and that they would hear accurately and precisely. And I thank you for the honor of bringing your word of preaching and teaching and through the preaching and teaching I'm asking you through these videos through these messages audio visual word written word spoken word to heal the people in Jesus name amen 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 glory to God Man, I'm having such a rich time with y'all today. I mean, all these broadcasts, this series of broadcasts that we're doing. We're going to pick up today where we have been, where we left off of the last, uh, the last message, the last broadcast. If you haven't watched, this is the third message in this series that I'm doing. And we're tracing something through the Word. And... I know the destination and it's good. Oh, it's good, 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 good. But we're getting there. If you haven't listened to the previous two messages, please, please go back and do so. I'm going to do a brief recap today, but we, you need to go back and get the details in those broadcasts. It's going to help you. It's going to be a good thing in your life and produce wonderful Marvelous, miraculous results if you grab a hold of it and apply it on person. Glory to God. Well, let's go back to Matthew chapter 8. Now, basically what we have done thus far <clears throat> is to trace a timeline. Jesus is teaching His disciples. He's, he's living ministry. He's on the mountain. He's by the seaside and He's teaching and and Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 34 says he expounded all things to his disciples. And you can see that in Matthew. Uh, we're, we're, we're picking up here in Matthew 8. But you go back, I mean, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7 is all red words. I mean, Jesus is a teaching. He's a preaching. He's expounding all things. And so we're looking at, a, at the timeline and some of the key things. I mean, you know, you could preach on just... <laughs> just these three chapters probably for years and still not get everything out of them but we're 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 zeroing in on something here so i'm wanting to i'm wanting you to focus the spirit of the lord has something to bring out here in these specific examples so we started off seeing this centurion he came to jesus in mark i mean excuse me in uh, matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 you see that the centurion came beseeching him and um, and asking the Lord, he said he, his servant was at home, sick of the palsy. And Jesus, oh, dear Lord, the heart of Jesus. Immediately, he said, I will come and heal him. Oh, I will. I will. It's my will. I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered in verse 8 and said, uh, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But speak the word only. And we see Jesus' response down here. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. Well, we've said it before, you know, there's places where he marveled at their unbelief. 
That's not the kind of marveling I want Jesus to do at me. I want this kind of marveling. He marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Great faith. So speak the word only. That is what Jesus called great faith. So we dealt with the spoken word. And then on over in Mark chapter 4, we looked at some things. And again, this is a little bit different. He includes a different teaching than Matthew did. Uh, we've already seen where he expounded all things. So there's all kinds of teachings. You know, the scripture says that if everything that Jesus did in his ministry had been recorded, the world could not contain the books. Now that's a lot of things, my brother and sister. So to see that, you know, one, one, you know, Mark included something in a different place than Matthew included it. Just, it just all fits together. So over here in Mark, we see where Jesus talks, uh, starting in verse 14. He talks about the sower sows the word. So we're back to the word. And he talks about uh, in verse 16, he starts talking about when they have heard the word. So he's talking about, he starts talking right there about hearing the word. And he goes on and he talks about the different results. And, and down in uh, verse 18, he talks about, These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear, hear the word. They heard the word, but cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. We're not talking about a fleeting here and there. We're talking about something that they have allowed to enter in. Entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The word of God himself, the word of Almighty God, could not produce results in their life because cares entered in and stopped the word. That's how serious this is. And then we saw, uh, we saw on down here in verse 23 where Jesus said, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And we talked about the fact that everybody out there had these paddles on the side of their head. He's talking about a hearing heart, the ears of their spirit. If they have them, let them hear. Take heed, and in verse 24, Jesus said, Take heed what you hear, with what measure you measure it, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that has, has what? Has hearing ears, ears to hear. For he that has ears to hear, to him shall be given. And he that hath not ears to hear, from him shall be taken even that which he has. And we talked about the fact that it has to do with the priority, the importance, the weight, the value that you give the word that you hear. That's the weight and the value and the production that the word will produce in your life. What, how you measure it, the value you give it, is how it will be measured back to you. So we see in this time long, timeline in Jesus' ministry, Jesus put examples in front of his disciples. He talked about the importance and the great faith in the spoken word only. That's all I need. That's all the centurion needed and how great faith that was. And then he goes on and he teaches about that and he teaches about hearing and the value of the, the weight that you give the word. Now, God never lets you get caught unprepared. That's what I, I want you to see that out of this. Okay? He had the example standing in front of him. They saw the results of speak the word only. Well, his servant was healed the self-same hour. Then he went ahead and expounded to them about that. You've got to value the word like the centurion did. The centurion placed great value, great weight on the, com the spoken command 
of the word. And we talked about on down where Jesus said in Mark 4, verse 35, he said, let us pass over unto the other side. Well, in Matthew chapter 8, we saw where he, well, just turn over there real quick. It, the, Matthew's account, he actually says in verse uh, 18, Now when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Now, that's what the centurion was saying. I'm under authority. I have those that are, I'm authority over. I issue the command and it's done. It's carried through. Okay, well... Jesus issued the command, let's go to the other side. And he, Jesus said he only did what he saw the Father do, and he only said what he heard the Father say. So when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, and he issued that command, that was the word of God, because he heard his Father say, go to the other side. So that was the word of God, just like this is the word of God. But the disciples ran into a problem. Jesus didn't run into a problem. He went back to the back of the ship and went to sleep. So let's pick it up here in uh, Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, where Jesus said, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there came a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow in perfect peace. And they awoke him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not? that we perish, and he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now how could he say that? How could he expect them to have faith in this situation because he had just showed them an example of faith in the spoken word with the centurion producing results of the healing of his servant and then he taught them that you have to give value and place great weight on the word of God for it to produce those results. If you place great weight, great results. If you place little weight, little results. They got little results because they said, well, I know Jesus said that, but there's this storm. Well, I know the word of God says I'm healed, but there's this cancer. Uh-oh. Have you heard that one before? Yeah, you and I both have heard that one before. And in one form or another, we've all done it. I, I You know... I know the word says exercise profiteth but for a little while and that means that you need to do it all the time. But I'm too busy. But I don't have a good place. None of that matters. If you really place value and weight on the word, you're going to do what it says. Period. Jesus was at perfect peace. It didn't matter what came. His father's word, the word of God, said go to the other side. It didn't matter if the, if the ship fell apart in the middle of the sea he, and he had to walk. He was going over to the other side on the power that was in the Word of God. Turn with me over. Turn with me over to Romans chapter 1 real quick. Let me just show you something really fast. Or not so fast. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. And starting in 15, Paul says, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, it what? It the gospel. 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now, I said earlier <clears throat> that word salvation means deliverance, protection, whatever you need that pertains unto life and godliness. He's provided it for you. That's salvation. Well, it didn't matter if the ship fell apart in the middle of the ocean. His deliverance, his protection, his power unto his salvation to accomplish what God told him to do was in the very command, let's go to the other side. The power of God was in the word to go. Glory to God. Do you see that? Do you see? Grab a hold of that. Now, let me show you. We're, we're, we're about out of time here, but let me show you something. One other thing real quick. Look at what the disciples said in verse 38 of Mark chapter 4. Master, carest thou not that we perish? They're upset with him because he doesn't appear to be to care. He's not worried in the slightest. That's what care is. Talking about be careful for nothing. Talking about worrying. Fear. Meditation on the lies of the devil. That's what worry is. Faith is meditation on the promises of God. Worry is meditation on the lies of the devil. And fear is a part of it. And they're, they're accusing Jesus. Why aren't you, do you not care for us? Well, it's obvious from what they said that they were full of care. They were worried and they were scared. You know they were scared because that's what Jesus said. Why are you so fearful? Well, he just got done teaching them a few verses earlier. I know it wasn't verses to them, but a few verses earlier that the cares of this world entering in would stop the power of the word to produce the results. They couldn't go to the other side because they had let care in and it choked and stopped the word from producing the result. Do you see that? Do you see that? They let fear and carry uh, fear and care and worry in and it stopped the production of the word he wasn't careful he didn't he wasn't full of care he was asleep on the pillow the power of the word of god to go to the other side was in full effect in his life and it produced the results. It stopped the storm. Glory to God. Glory to God. And it'll stop the storm in your life. It'll stop the storms in my life. And we are completely out of time. <laughs> Glory to God. They let the care enter in. It stopped the power of the Word of God from producing. He had no care. The power of the Word of God to go to the other side was in full effect. And it produced the desired results. Glory to God. Wow. Well, we're still going somewhere with this. We're, we're, we're going further and further. and we're, we're making progress here. So glory to God. I tell you what, it's David Weeder telling you, I love you. God loves you. We'll see you next time. And remember that Jesus is Lord.